Oh, does it? No, I have it. Model oh. only. There were other models that did have it, but then they didn't have the features of it, so you can't get everything on one okay, model. Okay, yeah. So, uh, okay, I, I assume that they all had left and right off. No. Sadly, they didn't put it on this one for whatever their reason. Now, at one time, some of those inputs are, are called TRS, tip rim sleeve, and they have the stereo in, in one core. Right. That doesn't have TRS capability? It might, I don't know. But it, I think it just does um, output mono. I think it's what it states. Or okay, it okay, yeah. Um, it would say if it was a uh, quarter inch or TRS, yeah. it would say it has TRS capability. No. But this does microphone, so you can plug a microphone in and use all the graphic equalizer and the echo effects and all that stuff oh, with okay. the microphone. So okay. I guess they built that in rather than doing that stereo. Well, uh, most people don't use it that much. Yeah. You know? so I guess it's designed for people who You have to have a stereo channel input. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so that one, but that one has two inputs.
Good morning. morning. Welcome to Shepherd of the Valley Lutheran Church. You may have noticed that the chairs are slightly further back from the altar and pulpit, and the reason for that is so that I can do this. The reason for that is uh, two things. Uh, one, we're discovering it's going to be easier for you to hear me now without my mask on, and the recording will pick it up better. The other is, by the end of second service, I can barely talk uh, wearing the mask because I'm speaking so much. So. Uh, moving you back just a little bit allows me to take this off. After the sermon, I'll put the mask back on, I'll sanitize my hands, and we'll prepare for the communion service when we will be interacting together. But uh, for the service with the words, the first half of the service, I'll be not wearing a mask. So, want to begin with our opening hymn, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead, by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord lifts up the humble. Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He heals the brokenhearted. He determines the number of the stars. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord lifts up the humble. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. We continue our study of the Lord's Prayer with the second petition and meaning. What is the second petition of the Lord's Prayer? What does this mean? How does God's kingdom come? The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you exalted your Son to the place of all honor and authority. Enlighten our minds by your Holy Spirit, that confessing Jesus as Lord, we may be led into all truth. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading appointed to the Sunday comes to us from the 18th chapter of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, declares the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the father as well as the soul of the son is mine. The soul who sins shall die. And yet you say, the way of the Lord is not just. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way not just? Is it not your ways that are not just? When a righteous person turns away from his righteousness and does injustice, he shall die for it. For the injustice he has done, he shall die. Again, when a wicked person turns away from the wickedness he has committed and does what is just and right, he shall save his life. Because he considered and turned away from all these transgressions that he had committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is not just. O house of Israel, are my ways not just? Is it not your ways that are not just? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone 
according to his ways, declares the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions, lest iniquity be your ruin. Cast away from all your transgressions that you have committed, and make yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the Lord God. So turn and live. This is the word of the Lord. He will command his angels concerning you. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. The epistle reading comes to us from Philippians, the second chapter. If there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not, to, not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him, bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do all things without grumbling or questioning, that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish, in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life, so that, in the day of Christ, I may be proud that I, that I did not run in vain or labor in vain, even if I am to be poured out as a drink offering upon the sacrificial offering of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. Likewise, you also should be glad and rejoice with me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise to the Alleluia verse from the Gospel reading. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came up to, up to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus answered them, I also will ask you one question. And if you tell me the answer, then I also will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, from where did it come? From heaven or from man? They discussed it among themselves, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say from man, we are afraid of the crowd, for they all hold that John was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We do not know. He said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. And the son answered, I will not. But afterward he changed his mind and went. He went to the other son and said the same. He too said, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? The Pharisees said, The first. Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even when you saw it, you did not afterward change your mind and believe him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We make up the confession of our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, 
begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue by finishing All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name, verses 5 through 7. You may be seated. go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even when you saw it, you did not afterward change your minds and believe him. Thus far the text. My dear friends in Christ, honesty is the best policy. It is always better to be truthful than to hide the truth or disguise it in some way. In the movie School Ties, Brendan Fraser plays a Jewish boy who attends a private school, but he's afraid of what his classmates and other school people will think of his identity, and so he hides the fact that he is a Jew. His character was wrong. You can't change who you are by birth. You can change your appearance, you can change your looks, but you can't change your race or ethnicity, nor should you try. It's a wonderful thing to come to understand one's ethnic culture. Growing up in Michigan, I came to understand German culture pretty, pretty well with towns like Frankentrost and Frankenbuch and many others. I came to understand lots of German traditions, lots of German foods, lots of cultural things, and that was all good and well. Those things are wonderful for us as we identify ourselves and come to understand where we come from and who we are. 
And they aren't a problem unless we take those traditions, those cultural tendencies, and we superimpose them on the world and believe everybody should behave that way, everybody should look that way, sound that way, be that way. So we need to be true to who we truly are. Neither of the two sons in our gospel lesson for today are true to who they are, sons of their father. They both lie to their father about their intentions. Their father asked both of them to go and work in the vineyard. Now the first son comes and he replies with a flat and defiant no. He will not go work in the vineyard. Later on, however, apparently after his conscience had been at work on him for a while, he changes his mind and he goes and works in the vineyard and does what his father asked him to do. The second son misleads the father with sly words. He answers the father, oh yes, sir, yes, I will go right now. It's not exactly how it should be translated is, yes, Lord, I will go and work right now. He wants to show his father immense respect. He's buttering his father up. He wants to overwhelm his father with respect. And as if he were saying to his father, I can't believe you even gave me the privilege of asking father. Oh, of course I will go. But then he doesn't. It's all a ruse. The second son has no intention of going and working in the vineyard. He talks a good talk, but there's no truth in what he says. Neither of the two sons is perfect. They both sin against the father. The first for not honoring his father's request. The second for lying about his intentions. And yet when Christ asked the Pharisees which of the two actually did what the father wanted, they answered and answered correctly that the first one did. He said he wasn't going to go work in the vineyard, and yet, because his father asked and his conscience worked upon him, he did. Now, as we begin to dissect this little parable that Jesus tells, and we try and find out who all of these characters represent, it becomes pretty obvious. The first son in the parable represents the tax collectors and the prostitutes. The first son had answered his father with a flat and defiant, no, he wouldn't obey. He wasn't going to go work in the vineyard. The tax collectors and prostitutes essentially answered God's word to them originally with, no, we're going to live our lives the way we want to live our lives. We tax collectors are going to collect more than we're supposed to. We're going to become greedy and make more money. We prostitutes are going to contact ourselves in lifestyles that are definitely outside of what God would want us to be. And yet, when John the Baptist comes along and he preaches to them, their flat, defiant no is changed. They repent. They turn. Because they believe the words of John the Baptist. They believe God's word through him. And their hearts are turned. And that flat, flat defiant no becomes, yes, Lord, I will obey. And they go and they work. They become and act as children of God. The Pharisees are, of course, the second son in the parable. They answered God with a buttering him up. Yes, my Lord and Master. But it's all lip service. Their lives bear no fruit of that call. They speak with grand eloquence of the kingdom of God, and yet they don't understand its meaning and purpose. Thus, the tax collectors and the prostitutes who, who do understand John's message and repent and change are actually ahead of the Pharisees. Pharisees feel they may have nothing to repent of. They have nothing to make a change from. They talk a good talk, but their lives are not lives of sacrifice, lives of service. They look right. They look religious. They look spiritual. But inside, Christ has called them in another place, whitewashed. Sandlot, a group of boys spends every day during the summer playing baseball. One particular day, they're playing and one of the boys hits a very long ball and it goes over the fence into this yard where there's this giant beast of a dog, right? You've probably seen the movie, they look through the hole and they see this giant dog and they're too scared to go get the baseball. And so now they're all mad because now they don't have a baseball and they can't play anymore. Well, one of the little boys remembers a ball that is sitting on a shelf in his father's den. And he decides, oh wait, I've got a baseball. It's in our house. And he runs home and he takes 
this ball off the shelf in his father's den. Because in his mind, that's what a baseball's for. It's to be hit, it's to be thrown, it's to be caught. It's not supposed to sit on a shelf looking pretty. A ball is a ball only when it's rolling, only when it's in motion, right? Only when it's doing what it was made to do. And yet the life of the Pharisees was just like the ball on that shelf. They looked very much like the part of men of faith, but they were not men in motion. Their lives of faith were decorative. They liked to be looked at. And yet because their faith was static, they were hypocrites, like the son lying to his father about going and working in the vineyard. They talked a good game, but bore no fruit of repentance. And yet, there is still hope for them as well. Because you have to listen closely to the way Christ speaks to them at the end here. Notice he doesn't say to them, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God instead of you. Or he doesn't say to them, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God and you are not. Here's what he says. The tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. Ahead of you. In those three words, we find hope for the Pharisees. There was still time, time to repent, time to change, time to bear that fruit of that repentance. Now, as you begin to think about this parable, I'm going to ask you to kind of set yourself there. Which of the two sons are you more akin to? Are you like the first son who at first appearance may not be doing the will of the father, but then you come to repentance? Or are you the second son? You have all the appearances of a Christian, and yet you are static, a ball that sits on a shelf looking pretty. Perhaps at times in our lives, the answer is that we are both. Sometimes we sin and flatly and frankly and defiantly say no to God, no to his word. We sin and we know we are sinning. But then we are reminded of our sin, we confess our sin, and we are forgiven and go to work in the vineyard of the Lord. And yet at other times, we also must admit we are the second son. We go to church, we have all the appearances of a Christian, but when it comes to serving in the church, serving in the community, telling others of Jesus, we are a ball standing still, sitting on a shelf, looking good, looking clean, even looking Christian, but standing still and not in motion. Thankfully, by the grace of God, whichever the two sons you find your life reflecting, God has promised that if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Christ has come and died so that we can be forgiven, forgiven for flatly and defiantly saying no to God's word by our behavior at times. Forgiven for putting up a good front looking like a Christian while not living it out, remaining static and not serving. Whether we feel because of the depth of our sin that we don't deserve God's favor, much like the tax collectors or prostitutes, or we are guilty of pride, of morality and goodness like the Pharisees, in either case, God is a gracious God. God desires to forgive you. God desires that you have eternal life. God desires all to come and be saved. To the tax collectors and prostitutes who had flatly defi defied God's word, Jesus says, theirs is the kingdom of God, for they have repented. The Pharisees, Jesus holds out the graceful hope of what might come upon them because of repentance. Sure, the tax collectors and Pharisees are entering the kingdom of God ahead of them, but not instead of them. They too can be forgiven. They too can have eternal life. They too can come into the kingdom of God. Going back to the movie Sandlot and the ball used off of the father's shelf from the den, of course it was no ordinary ball if you remember the movie. It was a baseball signed by Babe Ruth, and that signature made it something of great value. Apart from that signature, the ball really was only what it was supposed to be, when it was hit or thrown or caught. Yet with Babe Ruth's signature, with his name on it, it was something of great value. There may be times when our Christianity and our lives become very static. Times when we don't do a lot of good works and service. Times when we don't look a lot like a Christian. 
And yet our value is not found in the good works that we do. Our value, like that baseball, is found in the name we bear. It is the name we were baptized into. It is the name of him who died on the cross and rose to give us eternal life. We have immense and eternal value to God because we bear his name and he has saved us. In his blood we are forgiven and by that forgiveness we are then equipped to do good works. We are a ball bearing a precious name, but a ball to be a ball must roll. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. We continue with the prayer of the church. <coughs> o Lord, we are your people, chosen by your grace to be your own possession, granted mercy upon mercy. Hear your people who cry to you in need, and remember us according to the favor you have shown us in Jesus Christ. Make us to know your ways, O Lord, that we may walk in the path of salvation made known in your word. Hear our complaints and quiet them by your merciful deliverance. Lord, in your mercy, your encourage us, O Lord, by your Holy Spirit, that we may not lose heart, but being of one mind and one will, we may serve you with gladness, doing the works of your kingdom, and speaking your word of witness throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, your help us, O Lord, to hold fast to your word, and bless us with faithful pastors who will preach and teach your eternal gospel, that we may rejoice in doing your will, Guide those considering church work vocations and bless them as they are formed for your service. Lord, in your mercy, yes. shine your light upon us, O Lord, that we may do what is good and right and live as faithful citizens in our nation. Bless our president, our governor, and all those elected and appointed to make, administer, and judge our laws. Lord, in your mercy, yes. enlighten us with godly knowledge and wisdom. Bless those who pursue science to improve our lives and the lives of those in greatest need. Bless all honorable vocations and all honest labor. Lead the unemployed to good jobs and noble works, not only for their own interest, but for the good of us all. Lord, in your mercy. Show us your compassion, O Lord, and in your mercy grant healing, comfort, and peace to all those who suffer. Deliver them from all their afflictions, pain, sorrow, and fear. Lord, in your mercy. Guide us, O Lord, that with all our hearts, minds, bodies, and resources, we may serve you. Be with us all as we respect the vocations to which you have set us within your church. Lord, in your mercy. Grant to, all, grant to us all good things needful for this body and life and profitable for our salvation. And keep us from all things harmful, that sustained in time of want and guarded in time of prosperity, we may endure the, to the day of our Lord's coming and be judged worthy of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, yes. unite us, O Lord, that we may be of one mind and one will in doctrine, witness, and service. Bless us as we come to your bidding to receive the body and blood of your Son at his table. Grant that we may receive in this holy communion we may keep in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, yes. all these things we lift up before you and those things which are heavy upon our hearts we offer now silently. To your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Continue with the service of communion. The Lord be with you. And with 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O Christ, our Lamb of God, that takes us away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Christ, thou Lamb. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. Body of Christ given for you. Take drink of the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you in the true faith and the life everlasting in heart and in peace.
continue with the Nook to Minnis. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation. A light to lighten the Gentiles. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you of his eternal peace. Once again, it's very good to see you. Uh, it's good to have you with us this morning. Uh, God has given us a beautiful day in which to worship. It looks like it's going to get a little windy for the second service, so your timing was very well done. So I wish you Godspeed and have a good day.